it used to be that the classroom was a place. A place with four walls, where we gathered together to learn, to inspire, to achieve. The world has changed. It is so much bigger now. And the opportunities are endless in this new virtual world. For learning, for innovation, for preparing for a new digital future. It is time to acknowledge that the fourth industrial revolution is here. And it is time to embrace the world of technology, of digitization, of online learning, and the internet of things. Within the teaching community, we know that one thing has not changed. The commitment and dedication of our educators in ensuring that learners are future fit and prepared for this new world. The future world of work is ever-changing, ever-evolving and fast-moving. We will not be left behind. Join us in fueling a future world of work. We must prepare our learners for a future of boundless possibilities. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's been said that a good teacher doesn't tell his or her students what to think, but how to think. It's all about problem solving and critical thinking. And that is why we've gathered here today virtually for the fifth annual Technical Teachers Conference brought to you by the Sassol Foundation in collaboration with the Department of Education and also the AdCore Group. Now, for six years already, um, the, or since 2016 rather, the Sassel Foundation has brought together the best in class in the field of technical education. That's all of you. People brought together to share insights and knowledge so that you can apply best practices in your classrooms. But because, of course, we're living in a COVID world, it's a world of a new normal, and so it gives us an opportunity to deploy digital tools and help us to migrate onto virtual platforms. And I think this kind of hybrid conference where there's the physical stage and there's the virtual platform really brings to life the theme of this year's conference, which is to uh, bring to life the fourth industrial revolution and to infuse 4IR technologies in the form of teaching. Let me tell you a little bit about the platform. Um, you'll all be uh, exposed to what is a custom designed uh, and created ATTC virtual site. On it are exhibition displays by the partners. There's a portal uh, to an interactive breakaway session and then the, where you're going to meet with the trainers. And then there's a main stage with the keynote speakers alongside me. And then there's everything that's happening remotely as well. Some of our speakers from across the country and also abroad. Now, the benefits of hosting a virtual conference is that it allows us to go far and wide in bringing to you the very best in the field of uh, industrial revolution type thinking applied to different sectors of the economy. And those people can share their insights as to how you can make your teaching more interactive, dynamic, and creative. Now, our main objective, of course, in terms of the conference, is to ensure that we enhance learning, we enhance networking for yourselves, and also to bring you dynamic thinking in the field of vocational and technical education. This conference, as I said, it has been endorsed by the Department of Basic Education and the AdCore Group, brought to you by the Sunlam uh, Sassol Foundation, and uh, just to let you know, I'm not alone. I'm going to be introducing you now to my co-host, Sam. He's a little bit shy, so please be kind to him and give him a warm reception because he's not done this, a conference of this magnitude. Sam, please introduce yourself to the audience. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sasbot A2TT, which stands for Sasselbot aid to technical teachers, but you can just call me Sassel Android Machine, or SAM for short. 
I'd like to welcome you to the wonderful world of the Cecil 5th Annual Technical Teachers Conference for 2021. Thanks, Sam. Now, obviously, Sam, this is new for me, too. I've never had to engage with somebody like you before and certainly speak to a dynamic audience across the country. I do hope that for both you and myself, the butterflies do settle. Well, that does feel better. Thank you, Lerato. What is happening now? Well, Sam, before well, I get into today's... Well, that does feel better. Thank you, Lerato. What is happening now? Sam, before I get into today's theme, I think it would be lovely if our delegates could also have a chance to chat with you a little bit. What do you think? I have learned that the most important part of any virtual event is the engagement from the audience. That's right, Sam. And this platform does allow for us to interact with each other in the form of a chat facility. So let's just talk a little bit about how that's going to work, this chat facility which allows you to engage with our esteemed speakers throughout the course of the day. What we'd like to do is to encourage you all to make use of the live chat facility. It's on the streaming platform and through it you can pose your questions and your comments as well throughout the course of the day, throughout the course of tomorrow as well. That live chat is moderated and that's because we want to have uh, a maximum integration of your comments and your questions as well into the program. Whilst we're on the subject of housekeeping, Sam, would you like to do the honours in terms of telling people how the platform works? Sure, Lerato. Today's session is being hosted on our exclusive events case platform. If you are experiencing any buffering issues, please refresh your page or try switching to a low bandwidth option. Alternatively, restart your device and Wi-Fi router and log on to the platform again. Just a note that it is best viewed on a Google Chrome browser, so make sure you are logging on through Chrome. Most importantly, Please ensure that you have closed all other communication tools such as MS Teams, Skype and other Zoom meetings. Please note that bandwidth and load shedding will affect connectivity. To ensure optimal viewing, please toggle to full screen mode. You will find this control at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. This will allow you to view the presentation content as large as possible. There is a menu banner located on the top of the site where you can navigate by selecting the tab you wish to go to. If you accidentally close the site, simply click on the link again via your aid memoir mailer that was emailed to you. While in plenary, you will not have access to your camera and microphone. We encourage you to make use of the chat and Q&A function to communicate with us. Please note, that you need to be logged in in order to access the chat and Q&A functions. Please ensure you are logged in to your account. To log in, simply click on My Account located in the top right corner of your screen. You will be able to update your account information as well as add in an image of yourself. Please navigate to our FAQ section for any additional information. Should you encounter any technical issues, or need to chat with our online support, please navigate to the Contact Us section and select on the Live Chat function. After the event, we will have a tab in the menu bar called On Demand, where you will be able to download the speaker's presentations, as well as watching the recordings of the sessions. Please take note that this feature will only be available after the event. How was that, Lerato? Sam, I think it was perfect. You're really a natural. And with the housekeeping out of the way, I think it's apt for us to really kick off the agenda for the program this morning. And I'd like to introduce to you our very sp first speaker. I'd like to call upon virtually Mr. Joel de Holle, who is the chairman of the Sassel Foundation, to officially kick things off and open this event for us. Dr. Joel, over to you.
Program Director, Ms. Lerato Mbele. It's quite good to see you this morning, and I know that with you directing the program, everything will go well today. Thank you. Honorable Deputy Minister, Dr. Makato Makabo Mhaule, Sasol Foundation Trustees, Sasol Executives, and the management team at the Sasol Foundation, our strategic partners, Department of Basic Education, Edcop Group, and Kahiso Trust, members of the academic fraternity, and in particular, teachers and Sasal Foundation colleagues. Good morning, and a very warm welcome to the fifth Sasol Annual Technical Teachers Conference. It is truly a pleasure to be here with you today for what promises to be an exciting lineup of engaging speakers and activities. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is here and we are going to get a glimpse of it over the next two days. For those who may not be familiar with the history of the Sasol Foundation, it was established in 2008 as part of Sasol's efforts to contribute to addressing the shortage of critical skills in South Africa. The foundation was established with a very clear mandate to drive excellence in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, what we call STEM education in South Africa particularly in the under-resourced areas. Through it, meaning the Sasol Foundation, Sasol envisioned a change in the trajectory of underprivileged communities through the provision of resources and the creation of access to quality STEM education. More than a decade later, the foundation has realized its aspiration to be a leader in creating innovative and practical solutions in STEM education and to enable access to learning opportunities and resources in partnership with the Department of Basic Education. Among its key achievements, that is the Sasol Foundation's achievements, are the donation of 12 mobile science laboratories to education institutions, the majority of them in rural and peri-urban areas. These were contributed with the intention to bridge the gap between academic theory and real life for learners from disadvantaged schools, chemistry and environmental sciences, especially at previously disadvantaged universities in South Africa. Building vocational skills and providing learning materials and equipment. The aim of the foundation programs is to help address systematic challenges in STEM education with a, create, with a intention to create a knowledge economy. Now, let me talk about the conference. Ensuring that we produce a generation of adequately trained artisans who possess the correct combination of knowledge and needed skills to steer South Africa forward. This is the reason why we are gathered here today, physically and virtually, for this two day symposium. It was American inventor and aviation pioneer Wilbur Wright who said, and I quote, it is possible to fly without mottos, but not without knowledge and skill, close quote. Deputy Minister, the reality is that we live in a fast changing technological world where the impact of the fourth industrial revolution can be felt everywhere. Furthermore, Emerging economies the world over 
are competing for skills and talent as these have been identified as critical to their prosperity and social stability. South Africa, just like many of its developing countries' counterparts, is faced with the challenge of having predominantly unskilled or semi-skilled workforce. This is a significant risk as we need to find more innovative ways to revitalize our economy sufficiently post the COVID-19 pandemic. Like many countries, we will need to be more globally competitive. While great strides have been made over the last few years, South Africa still needs more engineers and artists. Let me remind you that the goal according to the national artisans per year, so we have a long way to go towards the 2030 objective. It remains our belief that the starting point of any form of development is education, and that it is a critical enabler to a thriving economy. Working together with all our partners across the different spheres, we believe we can continue to find solutions. Uh, the reality is that the future will be defined by how we position ourselves as a country, as well as our learners and students at primary and tertiary education levels to successfully ride the wave of change brought about by the fourth industrial revolution. As the Sassol Foundation, we have learned a lot over the past 10 years. Key among these lessons has been the significance of being a credible stakeholder partner that focuses on creating win-win partnerships driven by common interests and shared value and commitment. It is for this reason that I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone gathered here and virtually for making time to join us today. I'd also like to thank our partners, DBE, Department of Basic Education, ADCOP, and Cahiso Trust for their shared vision and passion to create a technically skilled generation of young people who will take South Africa forward. And lastly, I must congratulate my colleagues at Southall Foundation, the trustees, the management team under the leadership of Mr. Vosetwani for pulling off yet another incredible event using world-class technology to drive broader access and narrow barriers to participation while prioritizing our safety and well-being. I thank you. And thank you, Mr. Joel Dijole, Chairman of the Sassel Foundation. And thank you for reminding us the essence of this year's theme, which is infusing 4IR technologies in technical subject training. Your presentation was illuminating and also sobering in that you reminded us of the challenges before South Africa, the dire shortage of skills in the science, technology, and mathematics fields the good news, though, you also pointed that out, was that we are starting to see um, higher enrollment rates at universities for those specialist subjects. I think the rate is up by 9%. And in terms of the output, it said that in South Africa, those graduating in the areas of engineering, information systems, and uh, physics is up by 20%. So the future is bright. And what's going to make that future brighter, ladies and gentlemen, is how much fun you make it in the classroom to learn uh, science, tech, and maths. I think it's all about how we locate some of these complex theories in our daily realities. You know, for a child to see 
in terms of physics, how the milk mingles with his or her cereal at breakfast, questions about the daily commute, how a bus navigates its way through the traffic, how the how train works, and all those kinds of things. And this is the sort of curiosity that the Sassol Foundation is trying to harness in its support of an extensive network of schools across the country to ensure that children can really see how technology, science, and maths is just all around them in their day-to-day -day because it's when you do that, then they start to think about the solutions for their community and the country at large. So in supporting and training a new cohort of young technicians and inventors so that there can be an impactful change, we thank the Sassel Foundation and I'd like to welcome Ms. Charlotte Mugwena, who is the Executive Vice President for Human Resources and Stakeholder Relations, for a few words of her support. The vision of being a long-haul organization, uh, which is Sassel, which is last year was a, a, a celebrating 70 years of business and being an innovator and technology leader in all the synthetic fuel and other products that we make. It is the same philosophy that drives the work of the Sassel Foundation. 10 years ago, when the Sassel Foundation thought about putting together programs that are based on a, a very, very long future horizon uh, uh, um, outlook, we did not know that today we will be sitting here using digital equipment as we are using today. Thank you, Ms. Charlotte Mugwena. Thank you for a really passionate presentation that reiterates the importance of partnerships and also for putting your money where your mouth is, is that uh, Sassol is not just imagining this future, but they will support it technically, financially, and through these partnerships. She kept on reiterating a famous quote by Warren Buffett about those who plant the trees of today provide shade for tomorrow. And I'd like to reiterate with a famous East African idiom which says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. And that was the essence of her presentation, is nothing can be achieved without the entire ecosystem of the business community, the uh, technical teachers community, the government in the form of the Department of Basic Education, and all who believe in South Africa being future fit. And then lies the value of this annual Technical Teachers Conference brought to you by the Sassel Foundation. It's to provide a platform to interact, network with experts in various fields and sectors of the global economy. And that's what we're going to be bringing to you over the next two days, because we celebrate great partnerships and stakeholders too, don't we, Sam? All right, I think um, Sam, for now, is taking a, a coffee break. As I said, we're coming to you today and tomorrow live from the ADCOR uh, Conference Center. It's here in Johannesburg. And our next guest is speaking on behalf of the ADCOR Group Holdings to show support and alignment with what we've heard already for the objectives of this conference. I'd like you to warmly welcome where you are, Dr. John Wenzel, the CEO of the Adcor Group Holdings. Dr. Wenzel is joining us here physically on stage. Good morning. Let me start off by recognizing the Honorable Deputy Minister of Education, the Chief Director of the Department of Education, the representatives of the Sassel Foundation, my fellow speakers, our honored guests, and all of the attendees. Having worked for government for some years, I remember the phrase, all protocol is observed. All protocol is indeed observed. Welcome to our home at Corp Place. I trust that circumstances notwithstanding, you will find the two days refreshing and inspiring, and that it will have the positive outcomes that you seek. Over the next two days, you will doubtless engage with many highly skilled people as you wrestle 
with the current and future of technical training. In my address today, I want to take the opportunity to highlight what I believe to be a sector of education that is still undervalued and undersupplied, yet of critical importance to the economy. A sector that if we promote, capacitate and deal with some of these structural impediments can both reduce unemployment and drive economic growth. That sector is the technical and vocational training sector and the artisan in particular. Speakers have referred to it earlier. Artisans are an integral part of all communities, whether rural or large cities. The artisan sector is a critical driver of economic activity, job growth, and the second largest employer in the developing world, behind only agriculture. Artisans generate incomes and provide important and unique skills development, particularly to women. Artisan businesses help expand opportunity by diversifying and stimulating local economic activity and creating new jobs that can help families and communities thrive. Technical artisans are critical to the delivery of infrastructure and support across virtually every type of industry. But despite the immense contribution of artisans, there is still, in my view, a negative perception around working as an artisan in a technical trade in South Africa. Why is this so? During the apartheid era, the social, political and economic exclusion of black people by the government of the day resulted in very few qualified black artisans in particular sectors of the economy. The history of artisanal training and employment in South Africa was one of systemic social exclusion and inequality. Its history illuminates what educationalist Walter Wedekin calls the distinctive feature of artisanal training and apprenticeship in South Africa. Right from its earliest incarnation, it was a coercive and exploitative relationship rather than a benign relationship between a master craftsman and a novice. This checkered history has translated, I believe, into a negative discourse which we must address. This negative discourse is, however, not distinctive to South Africa alone. As South Africans, we grew up believing that artisans were the victims of the economy. They don't come to mind when you talk about success or financial freedom. Our society teaches that you should seek to be a doctor, a lawyer, or at the very least, a university graduate with a degree. Despite its potential to address challenges of skills gaps and reduce unemployment, students, parents, and the larger community appear to show little interest in TVET compared to university degrees. In most instances, TVET, or technical vocational training, is regarded as the last resort for those who wish to pursue a post-secondary academic path. According to the National Development Plan, as a previous speaker has indicated, for the country to stop poverty, reduce inequality, and ensure that all citizens have better working and living conditions by 2030, South Africa needs to produce over 30,000 qualified artisans a year to meet the labor demand. Currently, the country produces about 15,000 a year. South Africa not only has a shortage of artisans, but the average age of artisans in the country is about 55 years old. We thus have what can only be described as a perverse situation, where we have university graduates battling to find gainful employment whilst we decry a shortage of artisans to meet industry demand. At the AdCorp group of companies, we are trying to do our bit with AdCorp technical training, developing artisans to provide needed skills and to help alleviate the single most significant problem we face as a country after COVID, 
that of youth unemployment. As a country, we cannot find it acceptable that under the expanded definition, which includes those who have given up the hunt for a job, unemployment is now 43.2%. More staggeringly, youth unemployment under the expanded definition is 74.7%, which means that only one in four school leavers under the age of 24 have a job in the formal economy in South Africa. We need to do more. Encouraging young people to pursue careers as artisans is one way to address this dichotomy. But to pursue this, the country must be more honest to confront the extent of negativity about technical and vocational training amongst its citizens. We need to understand people's attitudes to certain types of work and occupations. The government's existing policy is concerned with training more and more artisans and improving their skills. And this is laudable. But there's also a need to open up more opportunities for young, black and especially women artisans to shift historical trends of success, access and attitude. However, without confronting the negative discourse of TVET and artisan as a vocational training and without addressing the attitudinal issues in our broader society, these efforts will not fulfill their true potential. Only through the promotion of TVET as a critical ingredient for change in national development can it become attractive for trainees and other stakeholders. This is what makes the active promotion of TVET a crucial area of engagement. We must confront the negativity surrounding TVET and artisan training in our country. As I close, I would also like to acknowledge that there is no artisan without the teacher. Each one of us here today, in this conference, either physically or virtually, would not be where we are if we did not have a teacher who cared for us at some point. We would not be where we are without the influence of a teacher. And thus allow me to thank all of my teachers, even the one at my high school who tried to teach me geography and failed. AdCorp is proud to host this conference. It resonates with our purpose, connecting potential, connecting human talent with jobs that help companies grow and enable people to have rewarding careers. One of those connectors is training, and that enabler is teaching. AdCorp recognizes all of our teachers. Finally, I wish you a safe and productive time at this conference, and I thank you for your attendance. Thanks to you, uh, Dr. Wenzel, the Group Chief Executive Officer of the ADCOR Group. And thank you for reminding us that there's dignity in all work. Yes, you provided for us some of the sobering statistics around unemployment in the country and that there's work across the value chain if we perceive work in its fullest form. Let's also remember that South Africa is a country that's trying to harness um, entrepreneurship and many of our artisans are self-starters, they are creatives, and they can very much not just have the technical skills required, but they are potentially the job creators of the future. So it's all about per perspective and how we view the opportunities ahead of us. Thank you to the ACO Group for your technical, intellectual, and material support of this fifth annual Technical Teachers Conference as well. It's a great segue, um, this presentation from Dr. Wenzel, into our next topic, which is us thinking about the future of work, which is going to be a great conversation starter, I think. So I'd like to encourage you all right now to get familiar with the chat facility on the platform so that you can start posting your questions on this topic of the future of work, and we'll be able to filter through your comments and your questions. Sam, is there something that you That is easy to do. Just type in your comments and questions into the chat box on the side of your viewing page. You might need to readjust the size of your screen to make it visible. We have moderators who are viewing all commentary and pushing forward the most relevant points 
and questions to us to include in the Q&A segments with our speakers. So, please do engage with us. This is your opportunity to upskill yourself and take advantage of the thought-leading speakers that are presenting for us today. Absolutely. Uh, take advantage of all the insights, all the knowledge. Just absorb and absorb because um, some of our speakers are really in the field. They are living, breathing, doing this 4IR in their uh, business sectors. And so without further ado, our next speaker is talking about the future of the workplace and the skills needed in the future, which have been alluded to in the presentations we've heard thus far. I know that for you as well as educators, it's top of mind as you keep asking yourselves what we are teaching these young men and women. Is it relevant for where they are going? Well, these are students entrusted to you via your tutelage. And what we're going to learn about now is how to prepare them for the world that's to come. Some would even say that world is already upon us. Others even say, I should be worried, Sam. People like me should be worried that people like you, robots like you, are going to take our jobs in the future. Should we be worried? Haha, <laughs> Lerato. This is a common misconception that humans have. Us, artificial intelligence, rely on all of the humans to continue to stay as focused and dedicated to their various parts. Our objective is to try and assist the human way of life to increase the overall well-being and efficiency with which your race is able to turn survival into a pleasurable lifestyle. Well, that's uh, good to know that this collaboration and not take over by the robots. So, um, I'm really pleased to welcome onto our screens now, Sam, all the way from Germany, Torsten Klavs, who is from uh, Porsche Cars in Germany. There's just a few questions that are coming through. Let me just remind um, our delegates to please migrate to the Q&A portal of the platform. And in that way, you can actually write the question that we'll be able to see and pose to our speakers. I'm going to start off with a question, uh, Mr. Klav, that comes from Gilbert uh, Schroeder. You said earlier, you know, your approach is to um, think global, but to act local. So... We are here talking about technical training for South African students that need to be future ready in this context. What sort of new content would you suggest that teachers start thinking about um, or new subjects as well as they approach the world of learning to prepare this cohort of this generation of South Africans? Yeah, this is a, 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 a good question. Uh, um, it's in, in the middle of the, tra uh, of, the tra uh, of the transformation. I, I think uh, the, to, to prepare these uh, uh, cohorts, the actual cohorts, uh, and also the uh, difficult situations at the moment, uh, from technical point of view, I think with high voltage and, and digitalization, that's maybe at add, add on qualifications uh, uh, beside the actual cohort classes if, if it's not integrated. So uh, additional courses, uh, to offer additional courses uh, to, to bring them on the first level to, uh, to electrify a skilled person uh, to maintain, uh, for example, uh, uh, e-mobility cars. Uh, on, on the other hand, I think, especially in these uh, challenging situations with, with COVID, COVID interruption of classes, um, the preparation of the classes uh, to, to, to collaborate with other teacher, teachers to exchange and bring the, the classes to activate them, that the, the students are collaborating together and give them enough praxis, this is the, the, the first step what we can, what we can do. 
Okay, there is another question coming through that says, could you elaborate on the teachers and school organizations um, regarding partnerships? So I think this is a question around partnerships, um, Herr Clav, how you forge those partnerships between yourselves as an automotive uh, manufacturer and what happens on the ground in some of these technical and vocational training colleges? Um. As I said, the, the, the most important uh, 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 topic is, uh, first of all, we need, we need to have a target picture in a country, um, in, in our business field, uh, to create a win-win situation. We need to, to have uh, a target pictures, like in South Africa, we are collaborating and communicating very open, uh, so we, we, are, we have a platform to communicate what we need from the future, for, for, for future point of view on technology. Um, we know and uh, uh, work together what it is existing material and uh, how um, vocational education uh, needs to be looked like from the local perspective uh, in, 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 uh, mm. uh, in line with the local, local system. And um, that's also, you can see this on our partnerships, we are collaborating on, uh, 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 on multiple levels, uh, on one hand, with our own mm. user network to integrate them, we are collaborating with schools, uh, we are collaborating uh, with RMI, and with this different perspective, right. uh, um, uh, it is necessary really to set up a collaboration with a common target, with a common clear picture right. and agreement, um, that we can create win-win situations. And also we do not have uh, the, the so solutions for everything uh, because uh, we are not selling uh, mm. a, a education like, like, a, like mm. a car. Uh, the, uh, uh, the challenge is that we are uh, developing this together and mm. uh, everybody uh, as a specialist uh, put in his, his mm. strengths and, uh, and his knowledge and all together uh, we mm. change uh, the, the education system to the needs for the right. uh, local society, but also for the business. And uh, right. of course, also if you are collaborating with schools, uh, for us it's always right. uh, important that it is uh, scalable uh, to other business right. fields uh, and also maybe to other, other brands. And uh, Mr. Klaus, we've run out of time, but there is a a repeated theme that's coming through some of the questions, affordability, affordability of PAV when it's integrated in other markets. So there's a repeated theme coming up, affordability. When people adopt and try to get onto the PAV program, is it affordable? Will they be able to, to do it? Yes, yes, of course. So uh, uh, um, this is all, uh, always uh, uh, ensured that they can transfer and do it by their own. Okay. Thank you so much to Torsten Klavs, who is from Porsche in Germany. Definitely an interesting presentation, thought-provoking, and just reiterates and demonstrates for us how what you learn in the classroom starts to be applied in key industries that can transform a country and an economy. And ultimately, that's what we are working towards, practical realities for um, South Africa. I know that the last year has really thrown us all in the deep end. We are here having a virtual hybrid conference, partly physical, partly online. We're having to adopt new technologies. It's been really, really taxing and challenging. But on the positive, for many of us, it's catapulted us perhaps five to 15 years ahead in terms of our digital skills. Many companies that were on the drawing board in terms of drafting uh, 4IR strategies are now having to actually implement 4IR systems. And the same is true for education and other fields. So um, it's been a difficult year 2020, but think of it as character building and a learning curve. And I think that's certainly the approach of um, the Department of Basic Education as they look at the world we're in and what it's doing in terms of beginning to set a mindset of enhancing a new national workforce for South Africa. And so to provide us with a little bit more policy insights from the DBE is Ndade Siliki Tabani, who's the Chief Director, MST and Curriculum Enhancement 
at the Department of Basic Education. Please welcome him warmly. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to introduce the Honorable uh, Deputy Minister of Basic Education, Dr. Mukhabar Rijaina Mhaule, uh, to address this August occasion. And I would like to acknowledge the top executive and the board of um, ArtCorp Group as well as Sasol Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Deputy, the Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, holds a doctoral degree in public administration, uh, and she has a specific interest uh, in teacher development because her thesis speaks to uh, the implications of teacher development on improving learner achievement. She practices as a teacher for over 20 years, and she has worked and understands the school environment very well. She has great passion for teachers, and uh, as we are speaking right now, as she's about to address you, she's also on the ground ensuring that teachers are vaccinated, uh, as announced by the Honorable Minister of Basic Education, Menji Motsecha, a few days ago, to ensure that our teachers are safe. The Deputy Minister is in one of our sites where she is monitoring and supporting uh, the campaign. And at the same time, she's about to talk to teachers who are driving our skills development initiative within basic education by teaching critical subjects of technical nature. Uh, the Deputy Minister has special interest in the new subjects that we are introducing uh, that are about to contribute towards skills development like coding and robotics, technical mathematics, technical sciences, and the nine specializations. Deputy Minister, you are about to address teachers from across the country who are eagerly waiting to hear the, minister, the Deputy Minister address them. Over to you, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tlavane, for the introductions. And uh, thank you for the, to the program director, program director Lerato, and uh, greetings to Mr. Joel Dikhole, the Sasol Foundation chairperson, Vusi Twane, the Sasol Foundation head, Charlotte Mukwena, executive vice president, human resource, John Wenzel, CEO of Adcop Group Holdings, Mr. Thompson Clubs, Poshkas, Germany, senior government officials and teachers all over the country, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, greetings to you this morning. Indeed, it is an honor and privilege to me to find myself addressing this meeting today and to deliver a keynote address at this critical Sasol Faith annual teachers conference 2021. The theme for this year's conference is infusing four AR technologies in technical subjects teaching. I address you today on behalf of our minister, Mrs. Angelina Mutsecha, who couldn't make it today uh, prior to other work commitments. This year, the government of the Republic of South Africa regarded 2021 as the year of Charlotte Maitreke. Charlotte Maitreke is a South African woman who was born in 1871. When we look at the year that Charlotte Maitreke was born, it tells us that she was born during the time when women, all women across the spectrum, were not allowed to participate in education of the Republic of South Africa, especially in the careers of their choices. So Charlotte Maitreke, against all odds, she made it to obtain metric and also made sure that uh, she get a degree. She's the first woman in the country to obtain a degree. For that matter, a degree in Bachelor of Science. And this story is not just a story for us to know. It's what do we do? 
under the circumstances? Do we allow circumstances to dictate what they want in our lives? Or we push against all odds? So we need to take Ume Charlotte Makeke as a role model, not only for women, for men and women, that there can be no obstacle that stands on your way when you want to do what God has given you to do. Again, this year marks 45th year since the Soweto uprising, the 1976 Soweto uprising, where young people were fighting for what they thought was not their right at the time they wanted their rights. And uh, we say young people today must take heed from what the young people of 1976 did. They cannot fold arms and say, the economy is not growing, there are no jobs, there's no this, then we just lie down and maybe embark on substance abuse and all this. We say, let them take lessons from the class of 1976 to make sure that they fight for their rights and they fight for what uh, is good for them. And fighting this time is not taking stones to the streets. Fighting is to fight through a book and a pen and to open your mouth and to knock at a stubborn door and make sure that every ear or a stubborn ear listens to you. So that's what young people must do uh, uh, in, in, in the, to take the fight forward. Program director, as we speak in South Africa, about 64% of the young people are not employed. And they all, the country, rely on basic education. So it's worse now with COVID-19 pandemic that many other people that were not working have lost their jobs. And there are many young people who have are qualified academically with master's degree and all the other degrees are at home not working because of the challenges that are facing our country today, South Africa. So... Today's youth are called upon yet again to lead in the new struggle against the invisible enemy, the COVID-19, uh, that threatens to reverse the gains of the democracy since its dawn in 1974. Another fight that the young people must fight is gender-based violence and femicide, that it should not be in their name. Collectively, as a country, we need to change the course, change the narrative as articulated by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, says our goal is to become a country where every young person has a place to go to, to unleash their potential. As part of a as part of the better measure to draw young people into the economy, the president announced the launch of the South African Youth, uh, the National Pathway Management Network. President explains the initiative, uh, that this initiative brings together government, departments, civil society, and big businesses to form a network that will support young people to find pathways into the economy. As government, we have forged a strong partnership with the Harambe Youth Employment Accelerator and other organizations to establish this network. Through these partnerships, we have developed an online platform called South Africa Youth Mobi. We make a call to young South Africans to register to South Africa Youth Mobi to translate their potential into opportunities. It is with this context uh, of apprehension about the future of our young people that we hold the SASOL 5th Annual Teachers uh, Conference 2021. As a country, we must double efforts and investment in basic education to ignite a new skill revolution in our country. We must provide our leadership and youth with the necessary skills and knowledge that will contribute to their personal growth and the country's long-term economic well-being. Our role as basic education is to support the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative and to harness the power of young people through education and training that, that is fit for a purpose. As a sector, we launched 
the three stream model a few years ago. But starting in this sixth administration, we want to make that a, a real, a real dream of South Africa. That uh, now we offer the three stream model with the technical, vocational, vocational, technical, occupational pathways added to the academic pathway, which in the past, the focus was only on the academic pathway. But now we say vocational and technical. The curriculum shift towards the three stream model owes is to bear to its path to the 2011 National Development Plans Policy call for the differentiated pathways in the basic education sector. This introduction has led to a plan to incrementally establish focus schools, uh, schools of specialization, including math, science, and technology schools, uh, schools of engineering, maritime, and art schools, to name just a few. We are gaining momentum if one looks at the various national participation rate of learners in civil technology, electrical technology, and mechanical technology, amongst others, since introduction. The grand idea is to offer school technical subjects that lead to apprenticeship, some competencies in a specific area before looking for the leadership post uh, education and world of work. As far back as 2014, researchers had correctly diagnosed the skills problem in our country. According to the University of Johannesburg 2014 study, it summarizes the problem as follows. The causes of skills shortage were established to be the closing down of artisan training schools, insufficient practical exposure, the unattractiveness of being artisans and migration of skills artisans amongst others. The researchers found that artisan skills shortage had also negatively impacted the construction industry in terms of the quality of work produced in, uh, increased cost of projects, delays, and de a decline in productivity. Thus, the three stream model is about making our STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics learners literate. In other words, to have some utility for the STEM related concept in the real world while at school, because these STEM skills are vital for the 21st century economy. We still want our learners to master foundational skills in language and arithmetic and still have competence or knowledge in a specific area. We are mindful that part from the inadequate pipelines in the STEM education stream, even university graduation in STEM-related courses is around 20%, contributing to a dire need for high-level skills in STEM areas. Program director, in line with the theme of infusing four IR technologies in technical subjects training, I am happy to announce that the draft coding and robotics curriculum has been submitted to Omalusi for approval. This is a critical step in getting the curriculum approved for use in all public schools, thus taking basic education competitiveness closer to our peers across the world. The Minister of Basic Education, Umam Enzi Mutseka, will soon publish the draft curriculum in the Government Gazette to public, for public comments. Our teachers' critical training in these subjects of the future, coding and robotics, is ongoing. We are confident that the national rollout of the coding and robotics curriculum in grade R to grade 3 and grade 7 will be achieved in 2023 and national coverage will only occur in 2025. This is a brave new world for us in line with our desire to offer future skills today. Let's take these critical steps together to alter the basic education system to meet the future's needs. Program Director, the partnership we have with the Sasol Foundation remains remarkable and unparalleled in many aspects. By conservative estimates, we have together with Sasol Foundation produced more than 118 titles of workbooks and textbooks currently being used by our schools. Most of these books focus on mathematics, science, and technology, where there's greatness, greatest need 
but a, a depth of expertise. This partnership is founded on the need to bring about quality education. We are proud for the first time that we own the intellectual property of the books produced in conjunction with SASO. This includes, but not limited to mathematics, grade four to six, uh, and technical science and technical mathematics for grade 10 and 11. I am happy to say that the Sasson Foundation's contribution in supporting this provision of technical subjects has, has been remarkably and deeply appreciated by the basic education sector as a whole. Working together, we can change the narrative about youth unemployment, lack of skills, and hopelessness. And in that, we'll be addressing the triple challenges of the country, what the country is facing of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. Uh, as the Ministry of Basic Education, we are truly indebted to Sasol Foundation for the innovation and financial injection behind our partnership. I wish that our partnership in education continues to flourish uh, in our lifetime to realize our vision of quality education and better life for all South Africans. In conclusion, Program Director, I would like to congratulate the outstanding learners who won Sasol Foundation Prizes for the Practical Assessment Task, and I wish this uh, conference well. Nyabong. Nati Siabonga, Honorable Deputy Minister of uh, Basic Education, Dr. Mahabo Regina Maule, and we also thank Ndade Kabani for introducing you so warmly. So without further ado, I think it is time for me to introduce to you uh, Mr. Vusi Kwani, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Sasol Foundation. He's with us here today just for a few insights and also just to really issue a vote of thanks to all of you for your time, for your passion, and to all the stakeholders and partners as well. So over to Ndate Kwani. Thank you very much, uh, Lerato, and also greetings to Sam, although I'm not able to see Sam so he decides to disguise uh, themselves just somewhere. Um, indeed, uh, what a great start uh, to, to this conference. Um, I'm sure there will be quite a lot of reflections that we're going to do as we go through yeah, the rest of today and tomorrow. Uh, certainly uh, inspirations from our leadership. But uh, what I would like to just do now is to probably just uh, do the vote of thanks for this phase, which is the official opening uh, of the conference. Um, Honorable Deputy Minister of Basic Education, Dr. Maule, uh, our executive from Sasol, Charlotte Mukwena, the chairman of the foundation, Gerald Dijole, as well as the trustees, uh, because I believe the trustees, Lerato, are around this call, the CEO of ADCOP, Dr. Wenzel, and also the ADCOP leadership, I've, I've seen some of them here earlier on, Chief Director um, of uh, Basic Education uh, and also a friend of the foundation, that is Aliki Tabane. Um, our international guest presenter from Porsche, Mr. Torsten Klaus, all our partners that are on this line, educators from all provinces, uh, Odishala. I remember, Lerato, that that's where I started as well. I was a teacher for a short while, so I'm always passionate when I'm dealing with teachers on the line. The social colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, um, <clears throat> it is indeed an honor for me to be here with you and uh, also to have these few moments uh, just to thank the speakers that have just spoken earlier on and all protocol observed. It's really good to be part of this first virtual conference, um, which, uh, as it was said, has been able to reach to so many. I think when it was planned, uh, it was one of those where, you know, will it work and how are we going to do it? And uh, will people be kept excited? And I can see that Sam and Lerato seem to be doing a very good job in that regard so far. 
Um, my vote of thanks, as indicated, is going to be largely around the speakers that have spoken. I just want you to know so that if I don't acknowledge you as many people I'm not going to, it's because at the end of the conference, I will be back to do the full vote of thanks uh, for people that will be talking after me, as well as uh, obviously for the proceedings uh, tomorrow. Uh, I will start with you, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister, uh, just to express uh, our thank you for honoring this conference, especially on a day where you have lots of priorities. Uh, we are humbled by your presence. Uh, it is very important to the foundation that uh, actually you oversight the vaccination process of our teachers. Without the teachers, uh, there is no education in our country. So that you are able to share your engagements today with us is truly appreciated. I also want to thank you for the leadership that you provide in the space, especially for technical education, and also for acknowledging the, the, the long partnership with the foundation and your wishes that may this partnership continue to grow. And of course, one wishes that others uh, in the corporate sector uh, join SASOL to also play a big part and a prominent part in education. <clears throat> I'll move on now to our chair, as I call him, Dade uh, for your passion, the passion that you have for the work of the foundation and the leadership that you provide. Dade, please always know it is appreciated. And uh, in particular today, thank you for welcoming our educators and for setting the scene for this conference so eloquently. I cannot leave behind the trustees. Those are my bosses uh, who are always behind our work. Uh, we do thank you for your presence on the line and also for continued guidance, especially even guidance towards actually originating and activating a conference like this one. Our Executive Vice President, uh, Mayor Charlotte, we thank you, you, Mama. We call you Mama. I know you don't like me to do that, but I am going to take the privilege <laughs> uh, for your inspirational and challenging uh, speech um, and also for the pledge that you've made to the ministry. I hope, Deputy Minister, you got that pledge. That was actually very beautiful and honorable. Mayor your commitment and passion for education and for the development and advancement of our teachers is indeed very, very encouraging. You're the great supporter of the work of the foundation and your presence and contribution today is truly appreciated. Dr. Wenzel, the CEO of ArtCorp, we thank you for your partnership with us to enable us uh, to do the successful hosting of this conference, working uh, with us throughout the journey of the planning, and also making us to be free and feel at home at your space. We really also appreciate the message of support and your commitment to the development of technical skills in our country. Chief Director, I know you are still going to speak and you've got a big role that you're going to be playing, but we always appreciate you. It is good that you're with us. We always commit as this foundation to be with you all the time. Great to see you amongst us, and I look forward to hearing you speak uh, later on. To our international guest, uh, Lerato and Mr. Tosten, would like to thank you, sir, for agreeing to participate at this conference bringing insightful uh, uh, stuff around the technology that is, that is being used and also how that is relevant for this conference. I'm sure all the educators, uh, which I saw had a lot of questions, were inspired by what you said, and you'll be able to actually answer even more questions that will probably come your way. Your effort in terms of putting aside time and to actually participate at this conference is fully appreciated. There is one other Lerato that I would like to, to acknowledge and thank at this time. It is our leader at SASO, who is not here, Me Khao Mutwakhaye. Khao is the one that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, uh, supports us operationally, 
guides us. He's the one that I taste everything that I do, and the team does the same. She has some challenges at the moment. That is why she is not here. But how we acknowledge the role that you've played also in guiding us in the development of this conference. I want to end there for now. As I say, I'll be back tomorrow to do uh, further acknowledgements and vote of thanks for all that those that will be participating and continuing the proceedings from now until the end of the conference. Larato, I thank you. Recently, that uh, gratitude is the source of abundance and uh, all the abundant partnerships, expertise and support that the uh, Sassel Foundation uh, is receiving in its uh, work and stewardship with uh, technical educators and teachers in general in South Africa is really because of all your work. They are because you are. And so thank you very much for reminding us of that, uh, Ndate Kwani. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for a short break. And um, just to remind you of what's happened this morning, we've received a directive from leaders in business, in the industry, and in government to make sure that what happens over the next two days is to speak and engage in such a way that we start to elevate discussions around South Africa and its future to ensure that South African students, that the South African community are not resting on their laurels and that whatever happens henceforth is to ensure that this country is future fit and that we start infusing the technologies of the 4IR in our teaching methods and just generally in everything that we do. So as we uh, go into a break, I want to urge you to just ponder on some of the key thoughts and insights um, that you heard and just reflect on them as you have what is probably needed, a strong cup of coffee or tea, because after all, it is winter in South Africa. People often forget that. So as we go for a tea break, I'm looking for my partner in crime, Sam. Lerato, I would like to ask you for coffee. <laughs> you should, Sam. You've, I've missed you this entire morning, so I'd love to have coffee with you. It's a date. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a short 15-minute break. Please don't, um, don't log off. That's what I want to say to you. Don't think you need to switch off your computer and come back on again. Just leave it running. Don't close your browser. Get yourself a cup of tea. Stretch your legs. Enjoy the comfort break. We'll see you in 15 minutes sharp. Cheers. <laughs>